Hi, I'm Anna Christian from Drop Cycling and welcome to the Vox Women Cycling Show. Coming up in this month's show, we catch up with all the action from the Sunshine State as the Women's World Tour hits the USA for the Women's Tour of California. We find out what race day entails for a soigneur with Rally Cycling. We have a fascinating chat with Lindsay Goldman, rider and team owner of Hagen's Berman Supermint. But first, let's head to Belgium for the final race of the Ardennes week, Liège, Baston Liège. Heavy rain and wind greeted the riders on the start line of Liège, Baston Liège, the third edition of the race. 138.5 kilometers lay ahead of the peloton, including five classified climbs and rolling hills all the way from Bastogne to Liège. Conditions were brutal and as such, attacks were mainly neutralized. Erska Bravek of BTC City Ljubljana enjoyed a 30 second gap before she was caught on Cote de Vanna as Mitchelton Scott controlled the pace in the peloton. On the climbs, the pace was hot and the race became a war of attrition. A tough comeback for Lizzie Dignan, the former world champion in just her third race since having a baby last September. Maria Novolodskaya picked up QO endpoints on the Cote de Vanna and Cote de Bruma for Kogias Metler and was soon joined by Leah Kirchman of Team Sunweb. They built a gap of 1 minute 30 over 40 kilometres of racing before the chase began to close in on Cote de la Redoute. A crash brought down riders from Park Hotel Valkenburg and WNT Rota Pro Cycling. The sun shone through the clouds as an elite group formed at the front with the big names represented, including Annemiek van Vleuten, Ellen van Dijk, Kajen Uedoma, Alina Anialusik and Demi Vollering. As riders soon struggled with the pace, world time trial champion and two times La Course winner Annemiek van Vleuten attacked solo on Cote de la Redoute. There was another attack from three dangerous riders, Elisa Longo-Borghini and Lizzie Dijgen of Trek Segafredo, and Annika Langvard in hot pursuit of Van Vleuten. Behind, the bunch were fighting on the steep slope for this final race of the Spring Classics. The trio of Langvad, Dijgnen, and Elisa Longo-Borghini were soon caught by the chasers, but there was no doubt who the winner was. Annemiek van Vleuten, after 32 kilometers solo and with a gap of almost two minutes, took victory in Liège-Bastogne-Liège and moved into the lead in the UCI Women's World Tour rankings. Florida Mackay was second, Demi Vollering third. I knew I had a pretty good pace on La Redoute and already before the steep part I was alone so I knew that also on the climb I, I was strong and I had still a teammate and then the spread lines and I have to say also shout out to my team because we, they made, we made it hard on every climb, we took uh, responsibility in the race to make it hard and uh, so um, whole, it was a whole team effort and that uh, made, made this one more beautiful. Is it the best victory of your career so far? Well, Strade Bianchi was also really nice this year so... Uh, yeah, that's, but it's, uh, for sure this, uh, this was one that was really high on my wish list to finish my spring campaign with another win. So uh, two, uh, two wins and three second places is uh, after a knee injury, I'm, I'm super happy. Behind every great rider is a great team. We caught up with Rally UHC Cycling Swanya Rachel Voiles to find out what her job entails. Um, just tell us a little bit about what your job is with Rally uh, UHC. 
I'm one of the soigneurs here. So the soigneur position means caretaker in French. So we do pretty much taking care of all of the riders. The, there's massage that's at the core of that, but we also do bottle prep, meal prep, laundry, you know, transportation, uh, just kind of making sure that the riders can purely focus on the racing aspect and we can kind of help them with the recovery and everything around that. And to do a job like this, how would you get into it? How did you get into it? What's your background and your story? Uh, I actually had a really good friend that became a professional cyclist that I went to high school with and I kind of took a sports medicine uh, bodywork route and he took this professional cycling route and recommended to the team that he was on that I was good at what I did and that I could learn the cycling background aspect of it. So I got into it that way and kind of learned along the way, but yeah, my main role is preventing injury or dealing with injury and helping the guys perform at their highest level without having to worry about aches and pains. Do you have a favorite part of your day? So something that actually you really look forward to doing and it's quite nice to do and you like helping the riders? The body work, for sure. That's my favorite part, is helping them navigate any issues, because being on a bike is a man-made position. It's going to cause some kind of issues, and being able to eliminate that for them is a real highlight for me. And you said you weren't from a cycling background before. Do you ride a bike now? Have you got into it? Have you got really into the sport? Uh, I follow it because of the people that I know in it. So I would say I laugh with people that I know way too much about a sport I'll never do. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I ride a bike and I mean, use it for commuting. It's a really good stress reliever. It's really good transportation. It's good to just get out and see things faster than riding a bike, but not cooped up in a car. You said you had to look after like, the nutrition and you make all the food for the riders. Um, you make, what type of things do you make for the riders? They burn a lot of carbs in this endurance sport. So a lot of it has you know simple carbohydrates to replace there as well, but also protein. And we're looking at just healthy as possible so a lot of vegetables rice chicken and keeping things um, as simple as possible because you don't want to put a lot of heavy stuff on the, the stomach after a six hour ride and during the race what would a rider like to eat and especially when it's like we're here now in, in uh, california it's very hot what would a rider like to eat well so our sponsor is cliff products so they have uh, blocks and gels and bars that they can eat during the race but uh, any cyclist will always say that they prefer as much real food as possible. So Swaneers usually make rice cakes, which you can kind of put whatever you want in there. You can have coconut chocolate chip rice cakes, more savory, where you can put, you know, like little bacon bits or ham in there, salt. Um, that kind of is where Swaneers can get more creative and make it more exciting for the guys. But little paninis where you can do Nutella and peanut butter or... Uh, jam and sour cream or you know whatever we can make that they can eat on the bike that will give them sustenance but also um, main thing is especially when it's super hot that things aren't dry um, or hard so like this softer easier to chew stuff is always better um, sometimes you can put half a banana in there stuff like that like fruits really really good for recovery for endurance so and what's life like on the road? You're constantly on the go, going from one race to the other. What's it like being that one year sort of away from home, away from your family? What, what's that feeling like? Um, so I will say that because I didn't get into this because I was a cyclist, I got into it because of the people. Uh, these be people become like family to me. So I've had that question before where people are like, is it really weird to be away from home for that long? And honestly, it's more strange to be home when your team is like family. So you have this core group of people when the culture is good, which Rally UHC does a really good job at, um, making it so that you are traveling with people that you really want to be around. It's not just work. Don't go anywhere. We'll have all the racing from an explosive tour of California in just a few minutes. The World Tour headed to the USA for the Women's Tour of California, which for the first time was held in the southern state. 
High winds greeted the riders on the first stage as they prepared to race 96.5 kilometres out and back to Ventura with five classified climbs along the way on the Casitas Pass Road and the Gobernada Canyon Road. A short steep climb around five kilometres to go, which also doubled up as an intermediate sprint, could be a good springboard for a late stage winning attack before the finish on Shoreline Drive. The wind was very much the story of the day and positioning would prove crucial as the riders left Ventura. With the big hitters of the peloton on front, including US national champion Corinne Rivera and Olympic and world champion Anna van der Breggen. Lindsay Goldman of Hagen's Berman Supermint hit out solo despite the headwind, but was soon caught on the fourth climb of the day as what was left of the peloton came back together. And on the steep final climb, after hard work from her teammates, Anna van der Breggen attacked solo. She had a 25 second gap and behind the chase was on as the riders battled into the headwind. Time loss is crucial in the general classification. Trexeg Afredo, riding for Lizzie Dignan and Taylor Wiles were working hard. But no one could catch Anna van der Breggen despite the roaring headwind. If one rider can win into such wind, you can bet on the Dutch superstar. The Queen of the Ardennes proved she had the form, the confidence and the legs to claim victory on stage one of the Tour of California. Behind, the fight was on for second place. Arlena Sierra, Leah Kirchman and Elisa Balsamo were in contention but it was the young Italian for Valcar Silence Cycling who took second spot. Sierra finished third for Astana. So Anna van der Breggen, Elisa Balsamo and Alina Sierra finish on the podium on stage one. And in the general classification, all the big players were still in striking distance, including Lizzie Dignan, Taylor Wiles, Kajiat Nuadoma, Ashley Mulman Passio, and defending champion and Van der Breggen's teammate, Katie Hall. Stage two would see the peloton take on the almighty Mount Baldy. Just 74 kilometers long, but with over 2,200 meters of climbing and maximum gradients of almost 17%, it was going to be a brutal and decisive day in the saddle. Racing from Ontario, the peloton would take on the intermediate sprint in Glendora before the QOM climb, the Glendora Mountain Road Summit. Then the climbing would really begin on the slopes to the summit of Mount Baldy, a horse category climb. A nervous peloton set out from Ontario for a big day of climbing and a key day in the battle for the yellow leader's jersey. And it was home state hero Corinne Rivera in the stars and stripes of the USA national jersey who formed one of the early breakaways alongside Katrin Hannes and Omer Shapira of Canyon Shram. Soon Rivera and Hannes dropped back and Israeli national champion Shapira pushed on. But Katie Hall soon launched an attack that blew the race to bits in pursuit of lone leader Shapira. Hall brought teammate, the race leader, with her, and soon she and Van der Breggen passed Shapira and continued up the mountain, putting in more distance to the chasers behind, including Ashley Mulman Passio. And so it proved to be a perfect day for Bowles Dolmans as Katie Hall moved to the front to take the stage win in front of her friends and family in her home state. Van der Breggen was content to finish second and further extend her lead in the overall general classification. 
So a tactical masterclass then saw Katie Hall and Anna van der Breggen on the top and second step at the podium. Ashley Mumampasio won the battle for third on the stage. Van der Breggen leads with one stage to go with 29 seconds over Katie Hall. Ashley Mumampasio sits 106 back for CCC Live, while Clara Koppenberg and Kasia Nuodoma make up the top five. After a great solo ride, Omer Shapira jumps to eighth. The third and final stage saw the women head to Santa Clarita for 126 kilometers from Town Centre Drive to Pasadena, with a classified climb to take on up the Angeles Forest Highway Summit before three laps of the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena, a finish which should suit the sprinters. A warm and sunny day greeted the riders, but the pace proved hot. A big breakaway up the road proved too dangerous, and Anna van der Breggen took full responsibility for chasing it down, her blistering attack bringing the race back together and putting some riders in difficulty. Jennifer Lubecker of Show Air 2020 attacked from the group and brought Katrin Hammers with her. But van der Breggen appeared to have everything under control. Hammers was joined out front by Paulina Ruakas and they entered the finishing circuit at the Rose Bowl Stadium together. But with one lap to go, the gap was closing. Before long, Italian champion Annalisa Balsamo's Valcar Silent cycling teammate Marta Cavalli and Olga Zablinskaya joined the duo up the road. But the writing was on the wall, as the peloton could sense a bunch sprint was imminent. And so, in front of the crowds at the Rose Bowl Stadium, it was all back together with less than one kilometre to go, and the sprint train started to get organised. Huggins Berman Supermint led out their sprinter Leanne Ganza, the national criterium champion, before Corinne Rivera was forced into the barriers with a mechanical. A blow for Team Sunweb. Ganza led it out. Chloe Dygert Owen gave it a dig, but Elisa Balsamo would not be beaten. The 21 year old picked up her first World Tour win and had time to celebrate too. And look how much it meant to her Valcar Silence cycling teammates. Arlena Sierra got her second podium of the race, finishing second. Leanne Ganza finished third. And in finishing safely in the bunch, Anna van der Breggen wins the Amgen Tour of California women's race for a second time by 29 seconds over Bowles Dolman's teammate Katie Hall. Ashley Mumampasio picks up another World Tour podium with third. I love racing here. Um, there was a lot of climbing in three days, I must say. <laughs> and, and it was hard and, and really nice to win this, this race. But also the team spirit in these three days was really good. And this is why I race. I enjoy racing like this. And this is, uh, yeah, it's making a cyclist really happy, of course. So another win for Anna van der Breggen this season and a brilliant race for Bowles Dolmans with teammate Katie Hall in second. After injury during the Ardennes week, Ashley Mumampasio bounced back for a brilliant third. And as well as the yellow jersey, van der Breggen also went home with a Lexus. I'm here in California and it gives us a brilliant opportunity to speak to a rider who perhaps we don't normally get to see in Europe and that is Lindsay Goldman from Hagen's Berman Supermint. Lindsay, we're over here in California, the sun is shining, tad windy today, uh, which we're used to on mainland Europe of course. For you, racing here in America for Hagen's Berman Supermint, we want to find out a bit more about you and who you are as a person. First up, Hagen's Berman Supermint, you're the team owner, right? Tell us more about this. Uh, my business partner, John O'Coulter, and I started the team in the 2016 season, and he has transitioned to working with other teams at this point, so I am the sole owner of the team at this point, and I work with Tad Hamilton, who's the sports director, and the two of us run Hagen's Berman Supermint. That's absolutely incredible. In a, in a world that's very much dominated, I suppose, by men, 
in a male-dominated world of sport. That's that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Um, I try not to see it that way, mostly because I generally always have the approach that I, I don't see it. It sounds weird to say I don't see a difference between men and women, but I feel like there's so much talk now about you know women being marginalized and the glass ceiling and the wage gap. And while I acknowledge that these things are a reality, I just try and approach my work as an athlete and in business seeing their seeing no difference like I just see it as I'm running a team there's men running teams there's women running teams but I don't want to see it as any different because I feel like I'm not any different I'm not any I'm I'm gonna be as business savvy and ball busting as any guy would and I just run my team that way but beyond being a cyclist being a businesswoman we must mention you're also a mother as well Yes, sometimes I actually forget because it's still really weird to be like, I have a baby, like what? People gave me a kid and let me take it home. But yes, I have a 15-month-old daughter named Caroline. That's incredible. And was the decision for you easy to come back into cycling after having a baby? It was never something I even considered. Uh, I actually at the Tour of California two years ago was racing, hoping to win the most curious rider jersey, and I crashed out on stage two and broke my collarbone. So... It was kind of a bad ending to the stage. I had to go get surgery. I went home and I was home for a few weeks and my fiance and I discovered three weeks after that, that we were expecting a baby and it wasn't, it wasn't unplanned, but it wasn't, it wasn't planned. So in that moment, you know, I, I always knew I wanted one kid. I knew he was the one it was going to work out, but I also really wanted to make certain that the plans I had for myself in cycling weren't derailed and that I could find a way to come back. So I, I, trained as much as I could through pregnancy I rode the trainer literally up until the day before the baby came and then yeah, like 10 days after the baby came out I got back on the trainer and just kept going you're a businesswoman you're a mother you're a bike rider when will one when will one give they won't I can't let go of any of it uh I love riding too much and my husband rides so we do it together and it's a shared experience it's important to us we always joke like date night for us is not in the evening. Date night for us is like, let's go to the 5 a.m. group ride. Um, and I mean, obviously my kid will be around forever. Knock on wood, I hope. She's pretty awesome. And I never want to stop trying to accomplish things. So if, if I don't run a team at some point, then I'll look to the next thing in business, hopefully in cycling. I'd like to continue to try and make an impact in the sport in some meaningful way and keep doing that for as long as it's enjoyable. Thank you so much. That's it from this episode of the Vox Women Cycling Show. Join us next time for more from the world of women's cycling. Thank you for watching the Vox Women Cycling Show.